If you're using AI to create colouring books, stop right now and watch this video. Text-to-image AI, such as Midjourney, is a relatively new software. The platforms are constantly evolving, constantly changing, the output is getting better and better, but all that means is that more and more people are starting to find AI and more publishers are jumping on board the AI bandwagon. Now that means that Amazon and similar marketplaces are starting to slowly get flooded with AI curated content, especially in the colouring book genre. And I believe that consumers are starting to pick up on the more low quality side of things that are AI generated. If you wanted to, you could push out a colouring book in a day. And as I started with my journey using AI, it was very tempting to just pump out books using AI generated images. However, anyone can do that and it's going to be hard for you to differentiate yourselves from your competitors. But not only is it important for your product to be better than your competitors, similarities are starting to emerge around colouring books that use AI. If you've created your own colouring pages using AI, you'll know what I mean. There are lots of bubbles, extra lines, maybe additional arms or feet or toes. Things that don't quite make sense and if you are actually illustrating them, you would not add those yourself. I believe that the consumers are starting to catch up with AI generated content and a lot of people prefer to support illustrators over AI content. So what that means as a publisher is if your content is obviously AI generated and you're not stating that on your book page, then you run the risk of getting one star reviews from people saying it's AI generated, avoid. And that is one of the risks that I see with AI generated colouring books. I do fear somewhat that if the quality isn't good enough, that the consumers might start avoiding your books because they know that they're not done by a certain illustrator, that they are in fact generated by a computer software. And this is mostly because AI is constantly evolving, it's new, and the sentiment around AI is still relatively negative. Um, that might change moving forward, and I really hope it does, and that people start embracing it more, like us publishers are doing. But I do believe for now that the sentiment is quite negative, and I think for you to give your customers the best experience possible, especially with colouring pages, that you need to be putting in extra time and effort to fix your colouring pages before publishing them. So, in this video, I'm going to show you an example of what a colouring page comes out of mid-journey like, and then the processes that I take to retouch that in Photoshop and adjust it and, and fix certain elements before then publishing it in a colouring book. What I like about doing this is I'm taking pride in my product around my colouring books, around my content. It's making it not so obviously AI curated as well, which is a positive, but at the end of the day, the most important thing is I am creating the best colouring books possible and my products are constantly, constantly improving. Okay, so we're gonna show you an example. Here is an image for a colouring book that I generated through Midjourney. It's a really strong image. It's for a horror colouring book series that I'm doing at the moment on Amazon for, for Halloween. And as you can see, as a base, it's really, really nice. But if you think from a consumer's point of view and you've, you've got that printed in front of you, thinking about what makes sense to colour, what doesn't make sense to colour, maybe start questioning why is this bit included in this, would an illustrator do this? So that's the thought that I take when I retouch my images. I want to make sure that they're clear, that they're bright, I remove grey and shading where possible, where it makes sense to remove, and that I'm retouching the elements and removing additional lines and bubbles and things that don't quite make sense. Okay, so I'm using Photoshop for this. I'm gonna speed up through sections, I'll slow bits down and talk through what I'm doing. This normally takes me between five minutes and 30 minutes per page. With kids colouring book, it might only take a minute or two because it's less to touch up, but with a complex image such as this one, it's gonna take a little bit more time. But it's something that I don't mind doing. One reason is not everyone's gonna do this, not everyone's gonna do this step. A lot of people are just gonna get the images off mid-journey, put them in a book and publish it. Now, if I'm retouching it and making the images stronger, my book is gonna be better than theirs. So I hope this video helps inspire you to make your colouring pages and anything you make via AI better, stronger, and then hopefully it will help you sell more products as well. Okay, so getting started with this one. There is a little bit of gray in here, a little bit of dark, so I'm gonna look at adjusting the contrast and the brightness 
to try and remove some of the shading right at the beginning before retouching. What I find works well is upping the contrast quite a lot and the brightness maybe just a, a little bit as well. Um, but I do this by eye for each of my colouring pages. Then you need to zoom into your image and basically start painting over with a brush anything that looks kind of out of place. So here I'm zooming in, I'm removing some lines that don't quite make sense and maybe almost like simplifying the colouring page a little bit to actually allow for some creativity with the colours rather than confining people to such a small space. I'm going to remove a lot of the very AI bits in here which are circles and, and curved lines where there shouldn't really be any curved lines. I'm going to go through this image and spend about 10 minutes now removing a lot of these lines. sometimes if I, if I can what I like to do is make the image even more my own, make a better experience. And so say if I've got a plain area like this one and something looks like it's lacking, you can use the patch tool in Photoshop and basically add new elements by copying another section of the colouring page.
and we're actually going to create more on this arm down here removing the circles that aren't complete circles and add in circles which are actually okay for colouring. Now we're going to go back and clean up some more elements and I'll let you know where we get to. Next, after cleaning up with a hard paintbrush, there might be elements which involve shading where you might not want to have a super clean line. So for that, I like to use a softer hardness. I'll set the hardness down to zero on, on a brush. Um, it's normally a preset on Photoshop, and that will allow you to blend areas a bit nicer. So here, for example, we might not want to get rid of the whole of this, or we might want to blend it into a gray area. This will make it look a little less obvious that we've just removed and deleted something and there's like a hard stop. So it just allows you to blend it in a little bit more. Next, I'm gonna clean up the sky because as an illustrator, I don't think I'd ever add these random dots to a coloring page. So I think it makes sense to get rid of quite a lot of those and then also clean up some of this mess here as well. As you can see with this complex image, it takes a lot of time to, to retouch it and you could do as little as, as much as you really want to do. I've chosen to probably do a decent amount of retouching with this one. I felt like it was a beautiful image, but it did need a bit of cleaning up. So I wanted to use it, but you know, it did need a bit of work to make it suitable for colouring. But I think I'm pretty happy with that as a base. What I'm gonna do next is add a new layer and paint over with a soft brush some of the darker areas that I want to lighten up on this image. So at the beginning we did brightness and contrast, but this is just gonna focus on a specific area of the colouring page. 
So what we do is we paint over the area we want to brighten and then we select the overlay mode on this layer. I'll then do it by eye. So you probably don't want it at the full 100% opacity because it would just be a bit crazy and it will take away a lot of the black outline, but you might want it somewhere around 50, 30, 40%, something kind of like that. I think that looks quite nice. You can see the difference with it on and off. And I think it just gives a bit of a better coloring experience. So here we're actually around 25%. So there we go. They are my steps for improving your coloring pages. To recap, first of all, it's adjusting the brightness and contrast. Then it's retouching with a hard paintbrush to remove any elements. Then it's retouching areas with a soft brush, adding new elements with the patch tool, and then also brightening any areas that need a bit of brightening as well. So what does that look like side by side? What's it look like the before and after? Let's have a little look and see if you think it's improved or not. Here they are side by side. When you look at it like this on a screen, you might think that the, the difference is relatively minimal. But when you actually look at it and look at the areas and you're thinking about the, the parts that you're going to colour, I think the one on the right, the after, is so much stronger for colouring. And not only is it a stronger colouring page, it's a lot less obvious that it was generated by AI. For those who know what they're looking for, which I think people are going to start knowing more and more, the one on the left has a lot of additional circles, additional just squiggles there. Some things that just don't make sense. The one on the right, I've removed a lot of those. And I don't think that you would necessarily know that that was created by AI if you saw it in a colouring pitch. And there we go. That is my process that I've started doing on all of my colouring pages. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, AI is a relatively new platform, especially text to image AI. So if we have a look back to one of my old coloring pages from just a few months ago, this was mid journey version four. It wasn't upscaled to a higher resolution and I didn't retouch it. And if we compare that to what I'm doing now with mid journey version five, upscaling it with bigjpg.com to provide a higher resolution, and then also taking the time and effort to retouch it and make a better colouring page. I think the differences and the progression is night and day. And all this is going to do is, is it's going to allow us to create better and better colouring books, colouring pages, covers, t-shirt designs, logos, whatever you use AI for. Taking the time and effort to upscale, to retouch, just add that little bit of love into your AI curated content, it's really going to help you stand out from those who mass produce and just want to get volume out there. So there we go. That's what I'm currently doing with all of my colouring books. I'm taking the time and effort to retouch the pages and improve the colouring experience for the customer. Personally, I think that's going to pay off. It's going to remove a lot of the negative reviews that you might get from people who pick up that is created by AI. And then with better colouring pages, you've got more opportunity for people to recommend it to their friends and actually enjoy your book and come back for more. If you found this video helpful, please hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and leave me a comment below. You can even hit that join button and become a member of the channel where you can support me in my publishing journey. I hope this was helpful and I'll see you on the next one.